resource for all things systems, operations, and automations so that you can build a systemized pathway to more freedom, more flexibility, and more fun in your business. So today, I want to spend a few minutes talking to you guys about the one hire that I'm sure all of you have been thinking about making, but might actually be a bad idea for you and your business, right? So what hire is this? The hire that might not be the best fit for you might actually be the operations manager or the OBM role or the operations director role or the ongoing operations manager role within your business. Because I see this all the time and I actually recently had a contact come to me saying, hey, you know, I think that, you know, I need a operations manager, someone who is going to be here, you know, before I bring someone like you in to build out my systems. And then they need to have them here after I build out my systems as well, because they got to execute the thing, right? And when I saw this, I was like, oh, you know, this is actually not a good idea because a lot of times when you bring on a new hire, especially an operations manager, it's really easy for the person in that role to have a lot of time that is spent in the ramp up, right? And no shade to any of the OBMs or the operation directors, operations managers, all of the, you know, VAs operating as, you know, operations people or supporting operations in general. If you know me, you know that operations are my jam and I know that this is the path pathway for you to be able to scale and grow a business. But what I see most frequently is when you have this role within your team and when you bring them in as your first hire, there's often no one there for them to manage, right? So it's a mismatch at the onset. So if you have no one else in your team, it is probably a bad idea for you to hire an operations manager first right? Because they're there to really manage the groundwork, manage the team that already exists. I know that that's what I was doing when I was doing operations manager work, when I was operating like a fractional CEO, I was there to really oversee the team. I was there to oversee the operations. I was there to make sure that things were working, running properly. So if you don't even have the foundation of your business built, meaning you don't have the systems and processes in place, meaning you don't have your core team members who are there to execute in in place, meaning that you don't have your basic tech and automation already figured out, bringing on an operations manager at that point is probably a waste of time, energy, and money, right? For you to bring in that hire, onboard them, train them for a role that they're not best suited for. In those situations, you really need someone who's going to give you more lift. And that's where I say, if you're going to hire, hire first the people who are going to give you lift today, who are going to take things off of your plate so that you can actually move into that CEO role so you can have a little more spaciousness in your schedule. So that's something I see really, really frequently is where people think, oh, well, I'm in a coaching program or my coach keeps telling me that I need an ops manager because I'm making six figures or multi six figures. Well, if you don't have the foundation in place for that person to manage, then why are they there? In, why are they there in the first place? Right? So that's a situation where it would be a bad idea for you to hire an OBM or an operations manager going forward. Another situation that I see all the time is when they expect the Ops person, they're like, oh, I'm gonna hire the ops person, they're gonna build all my foundations, they're gonna manage all my launch, they're gonna do it all in one shot, right? This happened to me quite a lot. Well, I was doing OBM retainer style work, right? Where there are so many competing priorities during the day, during the period of time, that it's really hard to actually get to the building of the foundational items, unless there's actually like an increase in the resourcing, an increase in the hours, or what have, there has to be an increase somewhere. And I would often be in, the situa in a situation where there would be a launch happening that was taking up a lot of time and energy, and that would burn up my retainer, but the business owner was also trying to control costs and didn't want to have any overages for their systems to be built out, for the foundation to really be put in place. So even our best laid 90 day plan saying that, hey, we're going to build out these operations and all of these systems because of other competing priorities within the business um, just did not ever happen, right? There were other operational issues. There were other projects, there were strategic initiatives that were higher priority. And so systems kept getting pushed lower and lower onto this to-do list, especially when there was no budget for overages for us to add on more hours in order to really build out those foundational systems, right? So that's a situation that I see 
all, time and time again with my clients who come to me who have OBMs, who have been working with them for a long time, who they love, but because they're so inundated, they don't actually get to the full build out of their underlying systems or their underlying processes or really automating and looking at their technology as a cohesive whole because there's so many other competing priorities. So if you are at a place where you have a lot of launches, the business feels really busy, you're kind of drowning in your to-dos on and on, um, and you need resourcing to execute and to really get that work done, right? That might be a bad hire for you to just bring on an OBM or an ops manager thinking that they're gonna rebuild the foundation of your business for you and manage your projects and manage your strategic initiatives and manage your team and keep an eye on all of your KPIs or your key performance indicators. That is a lot for that role, if, especially if you're not interested in having a, if you're, if you're very budget conscious, right? You don't wanna go over in hours. You don't want to carve out a portion of hours to really be spent on the focus um, building out of those operations, you might be disappointed to find out that, hey, I've been in a retainer situation for six months or a year and our foundation isn't built yet. And sometimes that falls back on, you know, well, what were the priorities for the year, right? There might've been a lot of fires. There might've been things that were urgent that needed to be taken care of. And that's a situation I certainly saw a lot when I was a retainer, um, when I was taking retainer clients. And also that I see a lot with my, my colleagues and my friends who do a lot of retainer style work, right? There's a lot of priorities and at the end of the day you still have a finite amount of time to do it so there has to be a place where things give and usually that is in the resourcing the hours and the budget right so if you're at a place where you want the foundation built so that you can a bring on really great team members um, that you can scale really quickly that you can institute uh, or you should you can implement a lot of really big strategic growth um, activities and you want that foundation well then hiring an OBM or an ops manager might not be the best fit for you. They might actually be bad hires because they will be so busy trying to execute all of the things that are actually happening right now without having the time or the, the headspace or, you know, kind of the spaciousness in their role to really implement and build out that system for you, right? So if you want that foundation, which I know a lot of business owners want, um, you have to have a specific resource for it, right? It has to be a priority resource. It has to be a priority within the company. It can't just be an add-on to somebody else's role. And the third situation that I see is when you want to bring on um, a operations manager or you want someone who's going to be able to start managing your business, hiring other team members, and really to start working alongside of you as an integrator, but you don't have any systems in place and you expect that person to get up and running. Well, let me tell you, right? Even the most experienced people, even, you know, if you were to hire the most, if you were to hire, you know, Donald Miller himself, you know, to do your story brand, cause he's such an expert, but even he requires some setup time, some ramp up time to really understand what is happening in the business to really implement um, his process and his framework and his expertise appropriately. The same story and the same idea applies to you and your business, right? If you want someone to come in and just be able to run things for you when you have no foundation in place, you have no systems in place, no documentation, no technology, no automation, you're just doing everything on your own or your team is running everything in silos or piecemeal, um, nothing is standardized and you want someone to just come in, to, in and really be able to take over and run things immediately well that's a big ask as well and that is a sticky situation and it takes a lot longer in my experience what I've seen for myself when I was doing that work it's what I see with a lot of my clients who have these kind of team members or who have hired these kind of team members and they bring me in to kind of oversee and help manage as a fractional COO um, is that that ramp up time is a lot longer for not just in operational hire, but any hire when there are no systems, no operations, no documentation in place. So if you're thinking that you're going to hire someone and they're just going to be able to magically run your business for you without having that foundation already built for them, then don't be surprised if that takes a lot longer than you imagine, right? Or that a lot longer than you expect. It's not something that just happens overnight, right? Usually it will take a lot longer just to 
unravel or just to really understand well what does this business do what are we trying to or what are we trying to accomplish where are all the projects where are all the people where is everything at to just get the baseline the lay of the land might take you know between six eight twelve weeks before any work can actually happen and you still are paying those retainers right so at that situation if you think that you're going to have someone be able to come in and really be able to delegate really quickly really be able to outsource very quickly and get people who can hit the ground running without any systems or processes already in place then don't be expected don't be surprised if it takes you a lot more time and it takes you a lot more money for those people just to get up to speed all right so those are the three situations that i see most frequently where it would be a bad idea to actually hire an obm or an operational manager or any kind of operations director because you haven't set the foundation for them to really be successful without there being actual any systems or processes already in place it's really hard to get fast results so it's really hard to have you know someone just come in and know what's going on and really be able to take over for you without those foundational systems and processes already in place so i strongly suggest that you spend time focusing time energy resource budgeting into building out that foundation so every other person that you bring on board can be successful can be a 10 for you can be a unicorn in your business because that's what i have in my team and that's what a lot of my clients also have in their businesses because we set up the foundations so that no matter who we hire whether it is an obm whether it is their fractional coo whether it is another va a graphic designer or web designer whoever it is a junior coach junior consultant another strategist they all know exactly how how we work and we collapse the timeline from an onboarding and a ramp up period for them to really be able to take on work on their own from you know three plus months down to two weeks right that's what i am able to do with my clients when we build out their systems and processes so don't discount your systems and processes and the role that they really have in making your overall team successful because just hiring resources hiring bodies might actually be a bad idea for you. It might not actually give you the result that you want because there are a lot of scenarios, not just the three that I just named where, you know, you don't have the foundational pieces in place, where you want someone to get up to speed really fast. Um, those are These are just three scenarios that I have specifically encountered, but there are a lot more scenarios than that where your team will not be successful without this foundational syst of systems and without the foundation of operations, tech and automations already in place. All right, so until next time, bye guys.